Okay, we're going to do a quick tutorial here on ice materials and creating these in 3ds Max and V-Ray. So these are three ice materials we've used in the office recently, created by artists there. Over here we have this beautiful uh, ice material with all these lovely bump detail going on in here. The next one over here, you have this bear, and this is typical ice which you see, uh, which is a bit frosted, maybe used in drinks and so on and so forth. And this one here is a bit more like an iceberg. You have these details in here, this bump detail, and you have a lot of stuff going on here. This is also a beautiful ice material. So they're all fairly simple to create, uh, and they look great. So we're just going to go into that quickly. Uh, first off, I wanted to show you the scene which I'm using. It's fairly simple. We have an HDRI here, which has light coming in through these windows and hitting the objects here in the scene. We have a camera right here, which is taking the shot. And these lights are left over from a chandelier, which I've removed from the room. It's got a simple floor created with floor generator. And that's basically the room. We're going to look at some reference materials. Here we have one type of, of ice. There's a big block of smooth ice, which you can see through. We have another one here, which is a bit more frosty. We have this carving, beautiful carving of this bull. These ice cubes, more ice cubes carving here of a kingfisher, this frosted ice and the clear ice, again frosted and clear, this husky here. So those are the reference images which I've been looking at in relation to this ice. Okay, let's take a look at the materials themselves. The first one is this one here. It's fairly simple. It was created. The artist put in these at real world scale. 1800 by 1800 and if you view this image it looks like this now this is one from Evermotion uh, but this is a seamless looks like a dirty kind of metal texture so if you go into Google and you look at seamless metal texture and images and then if you click on tools size you really want something not too small you create something simple something similar with these any of these taken in photoshop and edited could look similar to the, the image which i've used there so that's gone into the reflection slot so you've got a variance there on the reflection this one here which is going into the bump slot. Looks like this. And you can see there's a lot of variation here on the whites and the darks. And this is really causing those balls that you see, the, the, the roughness on the outside of the lady. All this detail here is caused by that. Now, this one here is 1200 by 1200 and you'll remember the last one here was 1800 by 1800 with use real world scale selected. Now, what this means is because these are different, they're not going to overlap each other perfectly. So they're going to cause a difference in the surface. So you're not going to see the same thing again, 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 again. Now, because she isn't a box, she's a very random shape. I've put these in through V-Ray triplanar textures here, and this I've left the size at one, and that size of one means to really just take, pay attention to the size here on a bitmap loader, and that's the exact size which they want to be. The blend is 0.1, and it's the same here on both of these, one and 0.1. Now if we look at the material itself, the material has nothing in a diffuse slot as diffuse isn't being used at all in this one it is in the other two ice but not in this ice uh, reflection has the map in it reflection glossiness is set at 0.76 reflect on backside is ticked now if you look here at this reference image here reflect on backside means that the material when it renders is going to calculate the reflections on the back of the glass so the reflections of this guy's hand on the other side of this glass the reflections here from the windows on the other side of the glass those are going to be calculated 
if you think of something normal like let's take this hand here you don't need to calculate the reflections on the back of that the reflections that the the camera doesn't see because nothing sees them so by default that's checked off but for glass materials you need to turn on reflect on backside and it's right there now with this with this one fresnel is off refraction is set all the way up at 255 Reflective glossiness is left at 1, and IOR has been left at 1.6. I think actual IOR for, for ice is 1.3 something. You can Google it and find out. But this has just been left at the default, um, because really, you don't really notice it in the image, and there's no point in changing something which is going to have no effect. You, you can't see how that's refractive through there. You can just see that it is. And it's the same with everything, yeah. You can't even see the refraction in these really at all. You can see a bit of the shade of the brown coming in. All right. There is no fog used in these, in any of these materials. Translucency is off. The BRDF is set to microfacet GTR GGX. And glossy Fresnel, this is V-Ray 3.6. And glossy Fresnel is a new, new feature in V-Ray 3.6. And that's on. Uh, the bump here is set to 20. That's it. That's that first ice material. Moving on to the second one. This is the frosted one, the bear, the ice cube material. Okay, so this has diffuse set at 144. And the reason for that is because the refraction here is set at 181. So what that means is you're going to see completely through this amount of the material. But this amount you're not going to see through. So this amount is the diffuse. So if I were to go into the diffuse and make it black, you'll see this changes this whole material. So that's how these two work in tandem, the refraction and the diffuse. If this is down, then what, however much it's down, the rest will be the, re the diffuse channel. So again, the refraction is set at 181. The diffuse is set at 144. Reflection is set at 238. Reflective glossiness is left at 1. Fresnel in this case is left on. Again, Fresnel is at 1.6. There is no fog. BRDF is left at microfacet GTR GGX. And glossy Fresnel is on. Now, one other thing you need to know about this, really for glass and things like that, if you have a lot of refractive items, one after the other, after the other, after the other in a row. It has to calculate the refraction, the reflections of one on the other, on the other, on the other, and refractions of one on the other, on the other, on the other. And that's what this max depth is here, and this max depth. It says you can go through 15 of the same item again and again and again and again before you stop calculating. And same on the refraction. You can go through 15 items before you stop calculating. So that's really what that is. Moving on to the third material, this one is a modified version of this one. Now the bitmap here is an iceberg <laughs> and it works really well. So the size of this is 1100 by 1500. Oops. The reflection value here is 238. The refraction value is 206. Reflect, reflective glossiness is left at 1. Refraction glossiness is at 0.85. I'm not sure if I covered that on this earlier one. That's at 0.9. And this is important because this is used for um, making frosted glass and things like that. So normally for frosted, I'll set this at about 0.7, maybe 0.75. And you'll see this will change. See how it becomes like frosted glass. So we're just going to undo that. This one is a 0.85. There is no fog. The BRDF is microfacet GTR GGX. And glossy Fresnel is on. And the bump in this case is set to 30. I'm just going to check here. The blur amount on this, this is left at 1, that's left at 1, 
and that's at 0.5. And that can be important if you increase the blur amount, the details in the bitmap will start to disappear. So if you look at the render, you've got all these details and these will start to blur out as that blur amount goes up and becomes higher. And that's really it. Those are the three different ice materials and I hope this helps you in quickly creating some ice materials for your scene.